dragons? Here? What you see is a memory of a world that once was. A world suffering a slow death, whose denizens cried out for the release of oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. These creatures are shadow in shade, perpetuated only to suffuse Dynamis with their unending lamentations. Our friend Thancred, where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh yes. He is here and there and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. Huh. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. In like manner to the oblivion I send. I tried to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone. Didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... The heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. Survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled here. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade into a place you can perceive and where life can endure. That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. For how long, however, remains to be seen. Well then, we should hurry and tend to business. It's futile. You will never reach the true me. I told you, emotions dictate reality in this space. Such changes as you might work will not alter in its nature. You may see, but you cannot touch. Walk, but not advance. Meteon holds too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? I do not know. But Thancred gave his life that we might come this far. We must press on. Agreed. We cannot turn tail here. Not without something to show for our comrade's sacrifice. He remaineth as he was when I first approached, entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. So... Waiting to die like all the others, are you? 
So you say. Yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. suffered much, and repaid their suffering in kind. Had your brethren made the selfsame choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No, you must be willing to confront it, to stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy. This lesson, a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Stay back! There's a wind. He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. <sighs> Come. Let us follow the wind. 
It will not lead us astray. He would not. Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter, which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion the end of our society, and our world. We acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand, having remained entirely in the bounds of your star. The phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart, as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter into an eternal ice age. In hopes of proving that this determination was erroneous, we scrutinized our research from all angles even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter, the endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end, and there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom, accumulated since the dawning of our kind, would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. 
If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. So that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay, <laughs> it is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me. Driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. Suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. will soon dissipate. There may be a way to restore it. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on. And do not look back. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Riange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope 
that thou mayest have the strength to resist and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow, and eventually they are reborn, alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying, it lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you, to all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can, before your friend's emotions fade away, along with their protection. Out of ideas. As am I. Operating such consoles is trying enough, but if we can't even activate it... Perhaps there is a way. First, consider the world that has been recreated here. Its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves. And among the many wars they waged, the most notable was that against the dragons. As you've doubtless surmised, I believe this was the homeworld of Omega. Sid built a jamming device to defeat it, a device which generated massive bursts of lightning, its sole weakness. That's all well and good, but what does that... Wait, you're not thinking to strike the console with lightning, are you? Huh. As a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this, why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly, and there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? Very well. Here I go. It... it 
worked! for you. Of late, no mission orders have been issued. Why not? Has there been some manner of trouble? Reply. The extended operations unit is yet to determine guidelines for future assignments. All strategies are calculated, devised, and action in accordance with set guidelines. In the interim, all citizens are directed to maintain a state of combat readiness. And reply. Awaiting quick. Can you tell us why the Extended Operations Unit hasn't yet determined the guidelines? Unable to comply. Information unavailable or access restricted. In that case, is it possible for us to communicate directly with the unit? Access denied. Unable to establish connection. Is there anything you can tell us? Have there been any abnormalities, like a, a threat to the star or widespread unrest? Reply. Negative. All citizens continue to operate at maximum efficiency. If your operations are suboptimal, please proceed to a maintenance facility for evaluation. Otherwise, stand by at your designated post. End reply. End transmission. I could activate it again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? If all the Omicrons really were running as efficiently as it claimed, then I doubt they were hoping for life here to end. As this Sir told us, there just haven't been any new instructions and everyone is standing by should be standing by at any rate. If there are those that are neglecting their duties, perhaps we can glean a clue from them. I propose we take another look around and also try to find the operations unit 